Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Javier. Thank you so much for your time on this beautiful Monday morning. I'm not going to take much of it, but this is something that we're going to cover that's very important as it relates to how not to leave money on the table while at the same time bringing more value to our clients. So this is very important because I'm getting a lot of questions from people that I'll get into in just one second, some of our agents, and I want to make sure that you are able to answer this question that I'm going to ask here in just one second. So having said that, we're going to get right into it. We're going to go ahead and kick it off. So let me just go ahead and fire this bad boy up and then go ahead and make this happen. Let me just let some people that are coming in a little late. <clears throat> Perfect. All right, so here we go. I can see that you can see my screen. And today we're going to talk about how to run a million dollar baby illustration. This is something that's very important for a lot of different reasons, including, like I said earlier, you want to bring people value and meet with them at the same time. If there's a chance for you to make uh, some money while bringing value to people, you should jump on it every single opportunity that you get. So that's very, very important as well. So let me get right into it because I want to get into the training, but we got to cover a few things first that are also very important as well. Let's go ahead and start with the first. Now, first things first, I want to let everybody know that we did have a great event this past week in San Diego, and we're going to go all in in San Diego. As a matter of fact, we're going to be going down. I'm going to take a few people with me, and we're going to do a blitz, an opening blitz, just like we did in L.A., the Valley, and so on. And we made a decision that the only markets that we're really going to focus on this school year <clears throat> are going to be the L.A. area, the Inland Empire, and San Diego. And that's it. We were considering other Markets that, for a lot of different reasons, didn't work out primarily for the fact that uh, the people that we've had in these other markets are just not responding. They're not doing the part. They didn't pass their audition. So there's not a lot we can do with the high sense of confidence that we are going to be bringing value to people that we meet with. And so, therefore, those are the three markets that we are going to be focusing on. And I'm going to go back because we're going to do a workshop for San Diego area the life insurance agents as well. And so... Again, I just wanted to bring you up to speed on what exactly it is that we have going on in other areas as well. I also want to congratulate everybody who made last week a truly productive week. We had a lot of people go up there and knock it out of the ballpark, some veterans. We also had some brand new people present, and I'm happy to report that nobody had a meltdown. Everybody did actually very good, and that's a, a big, big part of what our expansion plan looks like. So I want to take a moment to congratulate everybody, including uh, Chin Kim, as you can see here on the image right now. He did a presentation last week. 24 teachers were in attendance. 14 follow-up appointments were booked. And on top of that, he has another presentation tomorrow that he's already trying to figure out how he's going to make it happen. Having said that, here's something that's very unique and a unique opportunity for uh, uh, everybody here. We are going to step it up. I have a meeting with school police as well as with the LAPD because next month, October, which is right around the corner, <coughs> excuse me, we are going to uh, be official silver sponsors with LAPRAC again. Then that opens up a whole new door, of course, every year with the LAPD. And I'm meeting with these officers and the lieutenants and the people in charge because we are going to start letting some of you into the campaign with the police officers as long as you're doing good with the teacher's market. Because of the simple fact that if you're not doing what you should be doing as far as production on the teacher side of the house, there's no way in hell you're going to do anything with the police officers. And we're not going to do that. Uh, so, But it is a great opportunity to dramatically increase your income. And so, therefore, it is important for you to know what is expected of you. And the one thing that we are going to be looking for, and we're actually going to start publishing, is how many appointments, how many leads, as we call it, everybody's receiving and how many they're converting. Because a lot of people are coming to me for help. Hey, I need closers here. I need closers there. And I just don't know you that well. I know a lot of you, but I don't know a lot of you, uh, your closing ratio per se. And if you're getting five appointments and you're closing none, I wouldn't give you any, to be honest with you, because I'm not going to take you from zero to hero, which I told everyone from day one. And we need everybody else to know exactly where we stand in regards to closing ratio. So make sure that you keep a very close eye on your closing ratio. I had somebody ask me, well, what happens if my clo closing ratio sucks? Well, very simple. Your only hope is to open up your own stuff, present it your own stuff, and then keep getting better on your own leads or appointments, but not on anybody else's dime. So understand that. So if you're struggling on the closing side of the house, uh, you know, brush off your suit and start learning how to open again or get with me, and I'll give you a, a game plan to make sure you can make that happen. Uh, I am going to have a second 
uh, boot camp. We're doing a two day boot camp for the school campaign that's only open to a new wave of people. Today, I have an email going out to 7,400 life insurance agents in the LA area. My goal is out of the 7,400, hopefully come up with a good 30. And if I do that, we're going to put them through a two day, what we did all summer long, we're going to do in two days. And as a courtesy to a few of you, we're going to invite you to come through it again. <clears throat> so hopefully we can go ahead and get you uh, going as far as closing is concerned. Otherwise, like I said, your only hope is that which you open. No promises are being made by anybody because you're not going to practice on anybody else's dime. And you have to respect that, that everybody here has gotten a leg legitimate shot. So congratulations, Mr. Chin Kim, for the job well done. Uh, George, 48 teachers were in attendance at a staff meeting. 34 appointments were booked. That is outstanding. The same thing with uh, Monica. She presented for her, her, her first formal one, <clears throat> and 37 teachers in attendance, 25 appointments were booked. This is all last week. Uh, also, uh, Reggie did a great job, as well as uh, Anthony. 30 teachers in attendance, 16 booked appointments. <clears throat> Excuse me, what was a little different here is that some of the teachers had spouses in the audience, so the numbers were really hard to calculate as to how many teachers exactly were there. And Stephen, I think Stephen had the highest closing ratio. He had 11 teachers, and he went ahead and booked 10 follow-up appointments. And Stephen did something that's very unique. He actually has the new team record. He went ahead and followed up on all of them immediately, and he immediately found out that two of them were no longer interested. And that's fine. They didn't want to meet. That left him with eight, and he actually saw all eight teachers in one day, which is the perfect way to crunch the numbers and make sure that you're compressing everything to the point that two are out, perfect. There's eight left, perfect. See them now, perfect. Now this week, it's nothing but appointment number twos. And that's what you want to do to maximize your profit and at the same time, maximize your success. So congratulations to Stephen on a job well done right there. Uh, this gentleman right here also want to take a moment to recognize Mr. Uh, Victor Macliff. Uh, he went ahead and submitted his first piece of business. He just joined us and he already has his first piece of business in the door. And I just can't tell you how proud I am of him. Uh, what's really unique about this is that it was actually a 1035 exchange. And so... Who can tell me what a 1035 exchange is? Anybody outside of George, outside of Kathy? Uh, what is a 1035 exchange? Uh, I think it's a rollover. A four or three rollover. Okay, what is it? What is it? What is it? No. Next? No, no, no. It's kind of, but it's not that one. Who knows? Anybody that really knows? Because this is yeah, the, Javier. This is this is rich. I actually just did one. I'm doing I'm doing a second one right now as we speak. It's they have a 403B currently, and I'm going to upgrade it. Got a quote on it, and going to put it into a Fit Select uh, product. Okay, okay. You are I mean, yes, on the right track. Somebody else. Well, 1035. Yeah, 1035. It's, this it's, is Vance. So uh, 1035s it's, are for our life insurance policy. It has to be like for like, and you transfer the cash value to the other policy. Perfect. And so what we're talking about is somebody has an IUL, let's just say already. And for whatever reason, there's a reason we should and could roll it over to another IUL. So it might be with another company. We roll over the cash value portion of that into the new IUL. And so therefore, the new IUL starts with a balance that what we call seeds the policy and allows the compounding of interest to start not on the first $300 per month, but on the first 5,000, 10,000, or whatever the dollar amount might be. And the reason that I say that is because when you go out there and meet with teachers, you have to make sure <clears throat> that you always have a change of uh, agent form where you're going to become the servicing agent because in most cases, they haven't heard from the agent that gave them the original policy. So at the very least, you should do is take over that piece of business so you can work on referrals. And then, of course, once the uh, uh, time limit hits, you can start picking up the actual residuals as well of that particular policy. But the 1035 exchange is something that a lot of people are just not familiar with. But my recommendation to everybody is to become familiar with this. So you can go ahead and do that. So that's one of the, one way that we are leaving money on the table. Oh, they already have a IUL. Well, take a look at it. Maybe they have you know living benefits, or maybe it's an old one. I come across very old ones before the living benefits were even here. It wasn't that long ago. So if they have no living benefits, surrender charges are gone, or very little. And we can roll it into another IUL that gives them living benefits. And on top of that, uh, absorbs the actual surrender charges. Maybe has no surrender charges. The client will thank you <clears throat> because instead of starting a $300, $200 one, they can do that. But at the same time, they will have a, a seed money that's going to allow it to continue to compound with potentially higher caps. So, so in other words, 
suitability is king. We have to make sure, because the question is, why would we do this? How will the client benefit from doing this 1035 exchange? And don't be afraid to get with your trainer to go ahead and answer that question to see whether or not it's a viable 1035 exchange. It's kind of yeah, the same how, thing. How, how your advanced. So the other benefit is if it's an old index UL or UL, it, it has an old CSO table. So the new ones now have better tables. So you have lower costs on cost sure. insurance. It, and, it's, it, and just remember one thing, the cost of insurance has dropped dramatically. And I rarely use the dramatically portion of it, but it has gone down dramatically. So if it's something that's going to give them more life insurance for less money, why not? And so as long as it meets the, the key thing is it's got to benefit the client first. And as long as that happens, you can do these all day long. There's a lot of business to be had. Uh, also, we have a very busy week, and I want to go over a few things as it relates to this. San Diego is going to come online not till I think uh, uh, I think Joel is here today. <clears throat> I don't remember the date for San Diego. I, I, I'll, I'll show you the calendar. But the point that I'm making is that we need to make sure that San Diego comes online the right way. And what I mean by that is this. This is the calendar for what's left of this month. Today, I'm sorry, tomorrow we have one, two, three, four, five presentations going on at the same time on the same day. That's a massive amount of work because we're talking about five different presenters. If we only need two, and in some of these uh, presentations, we need three closures. Well, do the math. <clears throat> That's two present, uh, five presenters, minimum, <coughs> excuse me, minimum of 10 closures, minimum, when a lot of our closures are already busy from last week's event of three and so how do we do that? And the answer is we have to be very good at knocking out appointment number one. Stack them. If you're going to go see a, a, a teacher. Now, Stephen, are you on? I don't know if Stephen's on. But Stephen did a great job. And he did something that I encourage everybody to consider. How do you see How do you see that many eight teachers for appointment one in one day? I mean, it's a hell of an efficient way to do I was, it. I was kind oh. of forced into it. Uh, after, okay, go ahead, after Stephen. Present, after presenting to them, uh, I was talking to the assistant principal who let me know that um, – you know, I presented on a Wednesday and he goes, by the way, nobody's here on Friday. So I knew that I wasn't going to be able to go there Friday and see people. And I knew I had this presentation tomorrow as well that was going to generate more. So I just went ahead, looked at everybody's cards, looked at everybody's schedules, reached out, told them I'm going to be on campus tomorrow the entire day. Here's when I am going to see you and here's where I'm going to see you. And uh, a couple people confirmed, um, not a lot of other people confirmed, but they showed up. Uh, when I was there on campus, they all saw me. They all knew I was there. Two people bailed out literally at the last minute, just said, you know what, never mind, no interest at all, which was fine. Um, but just tried to stack them in there and spend the day doing it. I had to kill a couple hours at Denny's around the corner at one point, grab a bite to eat. Um, but it just worked out that way. Um, and it was, you know, it was a lot, but it was really good just to do one after the other and go through the calculations one after the other and keep repeating that one after the other. And, stacking them in and so um mm. my, for my seconds i'll spread it out a little differently just more time hey, perfect. perfect outstanding congratulations on the job well done steven and i will tell you he said something that's very key and that is he told them when he was going to meet with them and he told them where he was going to meet them nobody you shouldn't be asking anybody anything so when i stack my appointments i always let them know uh, if anything i just confirm the room number hey it's javier i'm going to be there tomorrow at 2 30 i just want to confirm we're meeting in room 13 Yes, it's group 13. That's it. That, I don't want to know if they're still interested, if they're still available, if, they, if it's convenient. I don't know. I don't care about that. So make sure you get in the habit of doing that. Also, when you're booking your appointments, remember, if you're opening schools up, it's critical that you go ahead and you purchase the sports equipment at least at least a week before. Because where we get most of our supplies is a place called the Five Below. <clears throat> Weekends are the worst time to try to find them because that's when everybody and their mother comes out to buy all their stuff over the weekend. Shipment comes in, uh, shipments come in every day. So my recommendation is to go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday type of thing and just have an extra set of sports equipment in your garage so that when you do have one, you don't have to scramble for it, <clears throat> which is just what I believe everybody should, excuse me, should be doing as well. Now, another thing happened this past week that I want to share with you, and that is I have an appointment, uh, open up a school in Riverside. I did it electronically. Never met the lady, never met the principal, sent her an email. She clicked on the form. She selected the date. She told me there's going to be like 30, whatever, staff members, blah, 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 whatever. But then when I did, I called her. I don't call to confirm. If you call a principal to confirm, nine out of 10 times, they're going to either reschedule you or they're going to cancel you. So I don't call to confirm or, re or, or verify that the appointment is still happening or it's convenient for them. I always reach out to them to let them know. 
that we usually give out five, five, five balls of basketballs, whatever. Do they want to exchange five footballs for five additional basketballs? Yes. Perfect. When I told her that, she said, just drop them off after school. I said, no, 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 no. We don't do that. Uh, then there's no donation. <clears throat> the, e the email is clearly stated in the form you filled out. You gave us a staff meeting date. We have to present it at the staff meeting during which we take 10 minutes to do a retirement presentation. And that's a hard requirement. And she said, okay, then that's fine. Just 10 minutes, just 10 minutes. And then we're back on again for tomorrow in Riverside. Make sure you do it that way. You need to stay in control. They need you a hell of a lot more than you need them. And so therefore, don't be afraid to say, look, listen, if it was a misunderstanding, I'll follow my own sword. Sorry about that. We'll just try again next year and move on. There's only a few thousand schools, of course, that we can choose from. We want to work with those that understand the value of what we bring to the table as well. So that so make sure, and also make sure that your presenters, closers, everything is lined up at least minimum one to two weeks because everybody's getting so busy right now, so busy. Stephen wants to know how the hell he's going to do it. The same thing with Chin, the same thing with, with everybody. Monica's well, you know, just slammed, which is a good thing, but it's also a problem because we need more closers and, and we need qualified closers. That's very, very important because real soon we're going to be slapping a certified closer logo, if you would, on certain people and everybody else either work on your stuff, get your closing ratio up, or it's going to be time to move on. It's very, very simple. We cannot teach anybody anything beyond our regular training, and we're just not going to do it. We're just simply not going to do it. If you are lacking the confidence, if you don't know what you're doing, we're just going to simply move on. And the last thing I want to talk to you about, which is the important part, which is the training today, is people keep asking me, what do we do when somebody checks off on the areas of concern? I'm concerned about paying for my child's education. The answer, or one of the things to consider, is the million-dollar baby concept, which I'm going to show you right now. You don't show them what I'm going to show you. This is pre this presentation is what we do at churches and other places. <clears throat> Theoretically, you could if you took care of their own personal business and you want to talk about their baby. But the main thing I want to show you is the concept. And so I'm going to go ahead and get into that right now. And I'm going to actually run <clears throat> a live illustration. So I'm going to have to need my code uh, to log in because it's brand new. Now, when somebody talks to you about, uh, let's just say a million dollar, uh, I'm sorry, about a child's education, one option I just gave you is this, the million dollar baby. What, else, what other options are there out there? Anybody? What's the number one option? 529 plan. The 529. The 529 plan. Now, who can tell me what the 529 plan is outside of Monica? Somebody else. The 529 yeah, plan is a joke for Wall Street to suck more money out. But what is it? What is it? No, it's, what is a, it? it's a college savings plan that has to be used for education. If you don't use it for education, then you get taxes and penalties on it. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. And it's Perfect. Not even yeah. deductible in California. There's no reason to do a 529 in California. No. What you're going to talk about, Javier, is the best only way to go. Sure. And here's what I will tell you. At the end of the day, people only do what they know. And so therefore, our job is to go out there and educate and empower them, because I agree with all of you. But if people don't know about this, the number one thing that we do here in California is the 529. But that has more to do with the marketing <clears throat> and how people get hammered over and over and over and over. So here's what I'm going to do. You don't do this unless you want to. And I'm going to show you how to get a copy of what I'm going to share with you right now. But this is what I do after I take care of the parents. Never, 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 ever, ever, ever should a parent sacrifice their own financial future in the name of giving their children a shot. Meaning, if I'm the parent, do I go ahead and get my IUL because I have no life insurance, I have nothing? Or do I start by getting my child their own IUL? And the answer is the parents should go first for a lot of different reasons. If a child passes away, there's no financial loss. And so therefore, the, it's nice to have a death benefit, but it's not the same thing. We're not banking on the death portion of it. On the other hand, if a parent uh, financially uh, gets devastated because their spouse died, then more than likely they're going to have to give up the IUL for the baby anyways. And it's an ultimate loss, loss. We want you, the best way to take care of your child <clears throat> or your grandchild is to, excuse me, is to take care of yourself first. So here's something that I do after I write up the mom, the dad, or whatever the case might be, or what we do a lot of these presentations are churches. <laughs> excuse me. So here we go. And I'm going to fly through this. This is the opening slide of the million dollar baby. I actually know that baby pretty intimately. That's my granddaughter. And I'm opening up her uh, plan next month. So I'm going to use her as an example. I have two other grandkids. They both have an IUL. 
and they have thousands and thousands saved up already because of the simple fact that I wanted to make sure I did for them what I did for their parents, if you would, for all my children. Uh, my kids, all my kids have had their education paid for in cash, no student loan debt. I think student loan debt are the ultimate shackles that people have to drag through life, never allowing them to get to their true potential because they're literally owned by their creditors. And so therefore, I'm a big believer in financial security and independence and putting our money where our mouth is. I love my child. I love my child, but I really like this much better than that. And so this is, gives everybody a chance to put up or shut up. Not don't tell that to people, but I'm just saying this is how passionate I am about doing what we can for our children. So this is the actual uh, presentation. And this is the way it goes when we're talking, let's just say at a church, or if you ever want to practice and you know what you're doing already, you have a good closing ratio, I can give you literally a hundred presentations at what are called <clears throat> parent centers. LA Unified School District, every elementary school has a parent center, every single one. And every single time I call them and I say, hey, I want to schedule a college funding workshop for the parents, they will put together the audience. They'll give us the actual center. It's a presentation room. And you can go in there and practice your presentation skills in real life, even though the business that comes out of it is not the best. It doesn't stick on the books that much. I'll go into that at a later time. <clears throat> so here we go. Well, first of all, I want to talk to you today about how the million dollar baby concept works and how it can help your child or grandchild achieve the financial future that they deserve. Nothing represents a new beginning more than the birth of a child. The birth of a child will provide you, the parent or grandparent, the opportunity to build and pass on a legacy that will continue long after you're gone. This legacy includes your values, your work ethic, your culture, your heritage, religion, and a lot more. But there is also another legacy that you can leave that can bring many benefits and advantages to the newborn child, as well as future generations. And that is a financial legacy. With proper planning today, you can provide your child or grandchild a life full of financial security and stability. I mean, this includes college, this includes buying their first home, and even getting ready them for their own retirement, all because of what you did here today. The, way, the best way to accomplish these goals are with the uh, Index Universal Life Policy. Now, you might be thinking, what does life insurance have with anything else? Well, life insurance has very unique characteristics that allows you to go ahead and receive favored tax treatment, among other benefits as well. An index universal life policy or IUL combined with the most precious commodity your child or grandchild has today, which is, of course, time. They have nothing but time. Now, when it comes to time, you can either leverage it or you can let it you know, slip away. And unfortunately, so many parents allow that to happen unnecessarily. Your child's financial life and your legacy will be determined in great part by the decisions and actions you take on their behalf today. Now, to learn how you can give your child or grandchild a gift that can provide them with the life you dream for them, simply get back with the person who directed you here, or in this example, just make it the appointment that we're going to pass out right now, and we'll show you what is possible. Thank you so much for your time. Boom. And it's basically done. Uh, what I'm going to do, <coughs> what I'm going to do at this time is I'm going to go ahead and go into the browser and just show you real quick and just go over some pointers as it relates to the million dollar baby. Now, let me back up a little bit. Before I do this, if you have a phone, you can scan this flow code, which is a QR code, to get your hands on the PDF version of the presentation I just gave you right now. So if you want to go ahead and do that, or watch the video on YouTube that we're going to post it, and make sure that you go to our YouTube channel and subscribe to it. Please don't ever call or text me or email me. Ask me for the link to a video because I won't send, I'll just ignore you. Okay. I, I don't have time for that. So make sure that you go ahead and just subscribe to the damn channel. It's not that hard. One button and then notification of the bell, and you'll get notified when everything has been posted. Very, very simple. Don't call me. Don't call me. Um, so, anyways, let's get into this right here. <clears throat> this is obviously the National Life Group portal. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in and I'm just, hopefully it doesn't ask for a code. It shouldn't. Um, what I'm going to do, if it loads up, is simply go into illustrations on the right-hand side. From there, we're going to go to view illustration on the left-hand side. Cala, if defaults to what we need, and all we need to click on is flex life for the product, going to bring us here. And we're going to call this one 
rich baby. That's the name. Okay. This example is a female. And when it comes to age, you always want to put their exact date of birth. Trust me. 01, 04. So let's just see. Oh, shoot. I'm sorry. I put it. Hold on. Yeah, it's telling me I made a mistake and I did. Hold on. Let's just call it one. Or better yet. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> one year old. And so what we're going to do, standard non-tobacco. Hopefully the baby's not smoking yet. Um, so we're going to leave it as such. Rating, we're going to leave it alone. <clears throat> and everything else. Now, the only thing that's very important is going to be the owner's information. And so we're just going to call this one mom, dad. Okay. And this is very important. Who will be the owner? Now, the owner is usually the parent because usually the parents are paying for it. But theoretically, <clears throat> when it comes to my uh, grandkids, I'm the owner and my wife. My kids have nothing to say as it relates to this policy. So that's one of the things that people like a lot. Why? Because they're going to fund it. And I'm going to show you <clears throat> what that looks like here in just one second. Let me see. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to simply go ahead and... Do that. We're going to go into death benefit and funding, which is on the left-hand side, like we do for an adult. We're going to do, as always, only minimum, maximum. Don't be that person that likes to do based on target premium. You're doing yourself a service at the expense of your clients, and that is wrong. But here's the key thing. Super important. We always do level when it comes to dealing with adults, but when it comes to dealing with babies, we always want to go with B, which is increasing. And so the rule of thumb to remember is A, adult B, baby. And we don't want to change that for purposes of this illustration. So that means that the life insurance is going to start even lower than a typical min-max, but that's because kids don't need a lot of life insurance. We want as much money as possible to go to the actual <clears throat> um, cash value. So here, now what I do with my ki uh, grandkids, I pay annually on their birthday. I just make a one-time payment with the ability for the parents to take over at some point. So I'm going to leave it, at, let's just switch it and do it monthly. Most par parents are going to do it monthly. Here, we're going to go ahead and specify the amount. <clears throat> and then this example, we're going to call it $100 a month. And I'll show you two scenarios. One is going to be, we'll just call it A65. We'll just keep it funding. The parents take over and eventually the kids themselves take over. But we'll show you how to increase that in just one second. At this point, we're going to go into distribution. And we're going to change that to annual because it looks better. And we're going to solve for income. And once you do that, you just simply click on Quick View. <clears throat> and you'll see when we go into Quick View what we're talking about. So here we have an initial face amount of oh, 78000 which is fine. We don't want a lot of life insurance. $100 a month. Paid monthly. The MEC level is 1800 So this might be an issue in regards to wanting to overfund it at a later time. Um, the target premium is just basically not nothing. <clears throat> We're doing this for the kids. And that's why you always want to start with the parents, by the way, as well. But as you can see here, this illustrates 1200 a month, uh, uh, 1200 a year, every year. And by the time they get to 18 <laughs> which is right here, this one right here, you can see that they'll have $33,000 in their cash value account or their uh, balance, if you would, cash value. Now, what's important for you to always tell people is that we're not talking about paying for their entire college education. That could be the case, especially if they have, if they have scholarships or whatever. What you want to always tell parents and grandparents is that it's important for them to save to at least offset the cost of a higher education offset. I don't care if you have somebody who has a full ride to a university. If you ask them, uh, could $30,000 help you with incidentals as they call them? Maybe a room and board, or maybe it's supplies or whatever. The answer of course is going to be yes every single time. Now let's just say they do qualify for the uh, scholarship, the full ride, and they don't need the 33. It continues to ride. And by the time this person is, let's just say, 25 years old, which is right here, by the time they have $60,000 that they can use, at very least, to help them with some of the closing costs to, uh, towards purchasing a home or perhaps their down payment or whatever the case might be. 
And so as you can see, for whatever reason, they go FHA, they don't need it. Well, the money continues to ride. Now, we're not adjusting this like we should past the 1200 But as you can see, by the time this child is 50, <clears throat> they have $378,000. Not to mention the fact that by the time they retire, they can receive $81,000 a year tax-free every year for the rest of their life. Realistically, what, when I sell one of these things, if you really want to blow the parents away, you go to death benefit and funding, <clears throat> which the computer did not do. Let me just go back over here. There we go. And so here's what I recommend you do. Premium amount. I said that we're going to pay 100, 100 from age one through age 65. But what if we changed it? And let's just say we did this to age five. Perfect example. Because remember, now you're giving parents or grandparents a goal themselves. And so I'm going to add a row. And then what I'm going to say is I'm going to specify amount again. And now we're going to do $150 from, let me go back over here. I don't want to do A65. No, through A5. Here we go. Let's see if this works. A6 through, let's just say, 18, an example. Now, we're going to do it to age 18. And then let's just say, we want to do, or we can even leave it there. But the point is by adding a row, it gives you a ton of flexibility because now what we can do is we can tell it, specify amount again, and we're going to say we're going to do $200. And we're going to do that from age 19 until age 65. And then look at the numbers, age 65. So that's it. Let me just make sure. So, okay, so we have that. So it should be done. Let's click quick view. And if it's not, it'll give you an error. <clears throat> and if it's done the right way, like it is right now. Now, I think we're going to run into an issue. We might run into an issue. But if not, let's look at it. So 24, it, it does support it. So it does support it because you you know that there's 2,400 coming here. There's 1,800 coming. If there was not enough life insurance, what would happen? It would not allow you to put any more money. So what does this mean? You're going to start at $100 a month. <clears throat> they're going to bump it up to 150 when the child turns six. And by the time they are 18 years old, which is right here, we're looking at $42,000 for anything that they want college or anything else. Um, also, if you look at this now, by the time they're 25, there's already $85,000 to help them purchase that first home, uh, closing costs, down payment, whatever, a wedding, and when you start to show people what's possible, let me tell you, their mind and their imagination goes crazy in a good way. That's how they suckered me because that's what I wanted for my children. That's what I wanted for my grandchildren. And so with my middle one, I'm, I'm doing it a little different uh, with my uh, youngest, I'm oldest, I'm sorry. Here's what I would recommend you do. Because now when you show them how they can actually have even more. And so what they can do, <clears throat> they can go ahead and... I'm paying the 100 a month, which is 1,200 a year, but then the parents kick in. You don't have to. The parent does. Or the grandparent doesn't have to pay for the whole thing. Now the grandparents are, or the parents are pitching in 50 bucks a month or their own 100 bucks a month, and then all of a sudden this thing just starts to go crazy. And so here I'm going to show you an example of that. 200, and then from there. Now, before you go crazy and say, I don't think people save that, you will be surprised what people are willing to do for the benefit of their children. So don't paint yourself into that corner. And so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to click on Quick View. But look at the life insurance. Okay, here we go. Now the life insurance is $215,000, which is good. Um, there's $1,200. Then we go to $2,400. And by the time this child is 18, which is down here, there's $52,000 in there. And by the time they are 25, $109,000, which is simply incredible. At any time, we can change who pays or how much is paid by any one person or, or group of people. But the key thing is that the owner, and in this example, the parents or the grandparents with me, they remain as the actual owner. So the, the kids can't hit 18 and say, you know what, I'm going to cash it out, buy a car, or I'm going to do this. I'm going to, they can't do a damn thing when it comes to the money. 
in my agreement with all my grandchildren, like it has been with my own children, that if your ass doesn't go to school anymore, you don't want to go to college, you don't get a damn thing from this. It's very, very simple because it's just simply my money. And I can put up my own rules as I see fit. And so again, you can say no college, but I'll help you buy the house. No college, but I'll help you for your wedding. Uh, whatever. I did that with my kids anyways. But the point that I'm making is that you have, meaning the parent, the grandparent, the owner, full control over the policy itself as well. Um, any questions from anybody about anything before we wrap it up? We have a full week. Oh, just so you guys know, if you're going to need anything from me, get with me ASAP uh, because I'm going to be out of town. I'm going to be going to this city called, what the hell is it called? Um, I forget what it's called. Oh, oh, San Miguel de Allende, which is a city in uh, Mexico. I'm going to be flying out on Wednesday. But I'm flying back on Friday, so it's going to be just literally an overnight uh, trip to go out there and just get the hell out of here for a little while. But I want to make sure that, again, I will have my cell phone. It works everywhere that I go, as you guys know. But if you need me, me personally for anything, let me know uh, sooner rather than later so I can make sure I help you out as well. Any questions about anything? Anything? Um, Javier, I, I just want to mention a couple of things so people are aware of it. Please. Um, one is if you come across a national life client and they you cannot become their agent if it's still within the first year of their policy. Just so you know, because I just ran across that when I wrote a new piece of business and I was trying to become the agent. They will not allow you to become the agent. So um, I think that's really important just so that people know. Don't even bother filling out the form. They'll deny it. So <laughs> Perfect. And, and, you know, and that makes sense in, in, in a way, because within the first year, every not uh, let me back up and, I, and I'll let you I'll give it back to you because I want to just cover this. That's why it's crucial. It's crucial when you go back and you go ahead and deliver an annuity and I will. It's crucial that if I'm meeting with, let's just say, uh, Mr. Rugar. And I say, hey, well, first of all, Mr. Rugar, I can't tell you how happy I am for you that you did get approved for your IUL. Your financial future is pretty much set as long as you stick to the game plan. And I'm sure that you will. But listen, what I wanted to do right now, I wanted to go ahead and break out my calendar and schedule your annual review for next year right now. Now, I know you probably don't know what you got going on on this date in the year, but I want to make sure we at least have something. So let's just put it down for Monday, blah, 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 2024, to make sure we keep you on track to hit your financial goals. Always book your initial a uh, client review or annual review the moment you hand them the policy. If you think you're going to remember to do that later on, you're a fool. Make sure you always book it because you want to lock them in. Otherwise, like Kathy said, somebody can come along and do that. Kathy, go ahead. Go ahead. Continue. Oh, the other thing is, is just be aware because I come across this a lot that the teachers are always watching you. So what you say to other agents, don't talk about how much money you're making don't talk about, you know, the person you saw and what they're going to do and all that. You can do that, you know, privately somewhere else. Just be aware because they're always watching and listening to what you're doing. And you kind of set yourself up to not be a, a good presentation of a financial advisor when you behave that way. I just had somebody tell me they were at a presentation and this one agent was talking about how he was going to make all this money this month and blah, 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 blah. And that's about as stupid as it gets. I agree with you. Anything else, Kathy? Anything? Oh, no, that's it. Just, you know, knock Perfect. it out the ballpark and just also. Let's go. Yeah, and I, I'll see you tomorrow. You're going to be there tomorrow, right? In Riverside or Wednesday? It's Wednesday. Yeah, that's what I was going to tell you. It's not tomorrow. It's Wednesday. Yeah, yes, I, I will be there. I need a vacation. <laughs> Anyways, any other questions, comments, concerns, anything at all before we wrap it up? There is. Yeah, Javier, regarding, regarding, the, regarding the kids, the parents have to have equal to or more than uh, coverage before we can get the kids signed up. Yes. And so that's another reason why you always want to start with the parents, because the parents can't say, um, I don't have any life insurance whatsoever. It's not going to fly for the safety of the child. If they have more than one kid, every child has to have life insurance. It doesn't have to be the same amount, but it has to be in relation to their age. So if you've got three kids and mom and dad want to buy a million dollar life insurance policy on little Billy, but the other kids have nothing, they're not going to give it to him because little Billy's going to have a target on his head for a million dollars and parents do it. Very, very important. Good point. Anybody else? Copy link. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the actual chat and please do not call me, email me, text me for the link to the presentation. I'm going to ignore you. I'm putting it out to everyone in the chat right now 
or watch the video, the replay. And if you're watching the video, give us a, a, a like. We want to make sure that, again, we bring you know good stuff to you. And I just sent it out in the form of a chat to everybody. If you didn't get it, if you're driving, just wait for the video to come out. Please don't call me. Please don't text me. Please don't, you know, just don't do it. And that way we can go ahead and get going at all. Last call, questions, comments, concerns? If not, thank you for all that everybody is doing. We're having, I mean, it's incredible what's going on, but there's a lot more to come. So we got to be on our toes. Uh, if you do have a question regarding a scenario or what should you do here and there, by all means, give me a ring. Uh, that's what I'm here for. Make sure that you don't call George or, you know, just leave him alone unless you're going to split a deal with him. We don't want to do that. That's George is not part of the helpline. Uh, but what we do have as a helpline is the LSW. And I'm going to share this number with you right now. LSW has a dedicated marketing line that all they do is waiting for you to call them. And so I'm going to go ahead and give it to you. There's two. The first one I'm going to give you is going to be, let me see, here it is, 800-228-4579. Just press one if you're an agent, then from there, pre-sales, and then from there, life or annuity, one or two. And it gets you to people that they will send you everything you need to do whatever you need to do right there. All right? P perfect. All right. If no one has anything else, I just want to say thank you again for all that you do. I appreciate it. Hit me up if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. And again, no webinar this coming Wednesday, but I look forward to seeing you next Monday, if not at one of our many, many events that we have this week as well. So great job, everybody. Thank you so much. Have Make it a productive week. Bye-bye.